There is a museum in Coimbatore that most people have never heard of. Inside, you'll find something extraordinary. The remnants of a revolution that never happened. These machines were built by a man who couldn't afford school. A man who taught himself engineering by taking things apart and putting them back together. A man who's known to have built India's first electric motor. When we think of great inventors, we think of Thomas Edison. The wizard of Menlo Park, the man who gave us the light bulb, the phonograph, motion pictures. But here's what nobody tells you. India had its own Edison. His name was Gopalaswamy, Doreswamy, Naidu. And this is the story of how a poor boy from a village became one of the greatest inventors India has ever produced. Hello my friends. These videos take a lot of research, writing and editing to bring to life. If you find value in this story, please consider subscribing. It genuinely motivates me to create more films like this for you. With that said, let's get back into the story. But before we dive into Naidu's story, we need to understand something. What exactly is a polymath? From the Greek, poly meaning many and manthanine to learn. A polymath is someone who has mastered multiple fields of knowledge. Not just competent in many areas, but genuinely exceptional across disciplines. Leonardo da Vinci, the ultimate renaissance man, painter, sculptor, architect, inventor, anatomist, engineer, mathematician. He painted the Mona Lisa while designing flying machines and studying human musculature. Thomas Edison, America's greatest inventor, the light bulb, the phonograph, motion pictures, Benjamin Franklin, statesman, scientist, writer, inventor, diplomat. These weren't just smart people, they were minds that refused to be contained by a single discipline. Polymaths are humanity's greatest innovators, people who see connections that others miss, because they stand at the intersection of multiple fields. But here's what you will notice. Most of the polymaths we remember are from the West. Da Vinci from Italy, Edison from America, Newton from England, and India, a civilization thousands of years old, seems almost empty in the history books. But that's not because India lacked genius. Aryabhatta, the mathematician who discovered zero. Sushruta, the surgeon performing cataract operation in 600 BCE. Charaka, the physician whose texts formed the basis of Ayurveda. Jagadish Chandra Bose, Srinivasa Ramanujan. India was never short of genius. India was never short of polymaths. What India was short of was remembering them. In a small village near Coimbatore in 1893, India's answer to Thomas Edison was born. Edison grew up in America's Gilded Age at the dawn of electrical revolution. Naidu grew up in British-ruled India, in a country being systematically drained of its wealth. Edison would have access to laboratories, investors, a patent system that protected innovators. Naidu would have none of that. And yet, both share the same obsession, to understand how things work. One became the most famous inventor in history, the other became a forgotten footnote in his own country. But to understand why, we need to go back to the beginning. Young Thomas Edison is in school. He's restless, distracted, asking too many questions. After three months, his teacher gives up on him, calls him addled, confused, incapable of learning. His mother pulls him out of school. She decides to teach him herself. But more importantly, she gives him the space to experiment. Edison becomes obsessed. He reads everything, tries everything. At age 12, he starts his own business, selling newspapers on trains. He sets up a chemistry lab in a baggage car and it ends up with an explosion and a slap from a conductor that leaves Edison partially deaf. But he doesn't stop. He never stops. Now let's meet G.D. Naidu. Born in Kanagal village near Coimbatore, unlike Edison, Naidu doesn't even get the three months of formal education. His family is poor, very poor. By age 10, school is over, he needs to work. But just like Edison, Naidu also has that spark, that need to understand. He finds broken things, watches, locks, tools and takes them apart. At age 11, he gets a job. Apparently he's at an electrical repair shop in Coimbatore. Remember, this is 1904, electricity is still new to India. Edison at 15 was working as a telegraph operator, learning electrical systems. Naidu at 11 was learning the same thing. 
but in a country where electricity itself was a luxury reserve for the British colonizers. Two boys, two different worlds, one shared obsession to understand how the world works. Thomas Edison successfully tests a carbon filament that lasts 13 and a half hours. The incandescent light bulb. On New Year's Eve 1879, thousands traveled to Edison's Menlo Park laboratory to see the lights. Within a few years, Edison's lighting system begins illuminating cities across America. Edison becomes the wizard of Menlo Park. Is not just an inventor, he is a celebrity, a symbol of American ingenuity and progress. He attracts massive investments, start companies, his patents make him wealthy. His work lead to the creation of General Electric, one of the most powerful corporations in history. G.D. Naidu has spent decades watching, learning and understanding electric motors. And then, he does it. Under the banner of National Electric Works, Naidu along with D. Balasundaram builds India's first indigenous electric motor. From scratch, no imported parts, no foreign blueprints. But here's the difference. When Edison invents the light bulb, the world celebrates. When Naidu invents an electric motor, barely anyone notices. No international headlines, no crowds, no investors. Because this is British India. And the British narrative is clear. Indians are laborers, not innovators. Indians fix things, they don't invent them. But Naidu doesn't care about narratives. He cares about understanding, he cares about building. And he's just getting started. Let's talk about what made Edison revolutionary. It wasn't just that he invented things. It was that he turned invention into a system. Menlo Park wasn't just a laboratory. It was the world's first industrial research facility. The phonograph, the telephone transmitter, the stock ticker, the electric pen, 1093 US patents. Edison didn't just invent the light bulb, he invented the entire electrical grid to power it. He understood that invention without implementation was worthless. That's why his legacy endures. Not just in patents, but in companies, in the systems he created. Now let's look at GD Naidu. Naidu doesn't have investors, he doesn't have a team of engineers. In 1920, he designs a kerosene engine for agricultural use. 1922, creates a voltage stabilizer, one of the first in India. 1925, builds a fruit crushing machine for local farmers. Early 1930s, starts manufacturing razor blades. Wait, let me pause here. Razor blades. At this time, India imports everything, including the razor blades from Britain. It's part of the colonial economic model. India provides the raw material. Britain sells finished products back at markup. Naidu looks at these imported blades and thinks, I can make these. And he does. Not just make them, make them better and cheaper. In early 1950s, he designs prototypes for India's first indigenous automobile. Let me repeat that. In the early 1950s, more than 30 years before Maruti Suzuki, GD Naidu was designing Indian cars. What Naidu attempted was extraordinary. This wasn't just assembling imported parts, he was designing them from scratch. But here's where the parallel with Edison breaks down. Edison's invention became products, they scale, they spread. Naidu's car prototype never make it to production. Why? Because this is colonial India. The British controls the capital. Indigenous innovation is a threat. An Indian design car challenges the narrative that Indians need British goods. So it just stays in the workshop. A glimpse of what could have been the greatest innovation. Edison understood something crucial. Inventions die with their inventors. But knowledge? Knowledge can be passed on. Menlo Park became more than just a laboratory. It became a training ground. Nikola Tesla worked for Edison. William Joseph Hammer helped to establish electrical power systems. Francis Robin Upton helped to develop Edison's light bulb. Edison's legacy wasn't just in his patents, it was in the people he trained who went on to train others. A chain of knowledge passing down through generations. In 1945, G.D. Naidu realizes the same thing. India was almost nearing independence. But freedom from colonial rule isn't enough. India needs to build, to manufacture, to innovate. And for that, India needs engineers. Naidu establishes the G.D. Naidu Charities Trust. His mission was to create a new kind of engineering education. Not the British colonial model which focused on theory and obedience, but practical knowledge, hands-on learning. His philosophy was simple. 
you can't understand a motor by reading about it you need to understand it by taking it apart by seeing how each piece connects to the whole it was the same thing that had educated him now it would educate thousands more now do students went on to start their own workshops those workshops trained more engineers those engineers started companies those companies hired more engineers within a generation coimbatore transformed today coimbatore is known as the manchester of south india engineering manufacturing textile it produces 40% of india's automotive components in the 1930s and 40s while edison's general electric was becoming a global giant naidu was planting seeds in coimbatore too dozens of polytechnic and engineering colleges emerged but more than the institutions naidu created a culture a culture that said we are builders not just buyers edison built a corporation that carried his name general electric still exists today market cap billions of dollars Naidu didn't build a corporation he built something else an entire ecosystem of innovation not one company thousands of companies Edison's legacy is institutional corporate structures patents brands Naidu's legacy is cultural an entire city's identity So we arrive at the question that haunted this entire story if GD Naidu was so brilliant if his influence was so profound why don't we know his name The Edison Historical Park in New Jersey sees 30,000 visitors annually. The GD Naidu Museum in Coimbatore struggles to stay open. Why? Let's start with the obvious answer. Colonialism. Under the British rule, Indian education was designed to create clerks, not innovators. Students learned about Newton, Edison and Faraday. They learned that innovation happens in Europe and America. The message was clear. Indians were laborers. not inventors not leaders not creators colonial education was a psychological weapon this mental colonization outlasted physical colonization by decades even after independence in 1947 the textbooks barely changed indian students still learned about edison bell and the right brothers ask an indian engineering student to name five famous innovators edison einstein tesla newton bell steve jobs bill gates elon musk any indian inventors mm, apj abdul kalam Does Sundar Pichai count? Have you heard of GD Naidu? No. But colonialism isn't the only answer. There's another reason Edison is remembered. He was a showman. Edison understood that invention without promotion meant nothing. He courted the press, he staged demonstrations, he created a spectacle. When he perfected the light bulb, he didn't just announce it. He illuminated his entire laboratory complex and invited the world to see it. It was theater, it was marketing, it was genius. He understood the narrative he understood myth making Naidu did none of that he didn't court attention he didn't seek headlines when he invented something he simply invented it in a way Naidu was the anti edison in personality in a world that celebrates showmen quiet geniuses like Naidu gets forgotten Edison died in 1931 the entire united states dimmed its light for one minute in his honor Naidu died in 1974 a small obituary in a local paper No national mourning, no tributes, no dimmed lights. But perhaps the saddest part is that even in death, the forgetting continues. India continued teaching its children about Edison and continued not teaching them about GD Naidu. But here's something else nobody talks about. The Edison we celebrate, the wizard of the Menlo Park, the American hero, isn't the complete picture. Edison was ruthless in business. He publicly electrocuted animals including an elephant to prove AC power was dangerous. He didn't actually invent many of the things that's credited to him. The light bulb improved on 22 previous inventors' designs. The motion picture camera, mostly the work of his employee William Kennedy Dixon. Edison was brilliant at taking other people's ideas, improving them, and most importantly, commercializing them. He held 1093 patents. Many listed him as inventors when his employees did the actual work. He was in essence the Steve Jobs of his era. Great at synthesis, great at marketing, great at claiming credit. This is not to diminish Edison's genius. He was a genius, but it's to show that the inventor we celebrate is partly myth, a carefully crafted narrative of lone genius and singular brilliance. Naidu actually was a lone genius that Edison pretended to be. He didn't have a team of engineers and scientists he could credit himself for. He didn't have a corporate backing to commercialize at scale. He didn't have a PR machine creating his mythology. In a way, for me Naidu was a pure inventor. But history doesn't celebrate purity. History celebrates success. 
and success in modern world requires more than genius it requires capital media narrative control maybe this is how remembering begins not with grand national campaigns not with government mandates but with stories passed down shared and rediscovered in recent years something has started to change historians are researching naidu's life movies are being made books are being written a new generation is asking who were our inventors our innovators our polymaths gd naidu jagadish chandra bose shrinivas ramanujan pc mahanalogis names that should have always been thought when american children learn about edison they learn americans can invent they can innovate they can change the world when indian children didn't learn about naidu the learned innovation happens elsewhere that's the cost of forgetting it's not just about one man's legacy it's an entire nation's self image because somewhere in india right now there's a kid like naidu was smart curious talented but poor and that kid needs to know that someone like them became one of the greatest inventors in india that not having formal education is not the end of story that kid needs a hero who looks like them and that's why we need to remember gd naidu india's first indigenous electric motor was built by a man who couldn't even afford school who became one of the greatest indian inventors who deserves to be remembered his name was gopala swami torai swami naidu the indian edison no just gd naidu